Law enforcement are sworn in to save people's lives, but what happens when they face the gun towards the innocent? These are moments when cops accidentally become killed. Just like this first one who had no control over his trigger finger. Three police officers, including Officer Whalen, enter the compound of the house clearly marked with the number 5305, which belonged to Mr. Robert Dotson. Watch out for a dog. Police department. It's important to note here that the police were responding to a distress call, so they needed some kind of communication. Can you try to call? Come back. Tell them to come to the door. Affirming no one's come to the door? Hey, Affirm, if you can call the RP back and have them come to the door. Farmington, please. Four one five two four twenty three nine. It might have been forty three oh eight. Is it forty three or fifty three oh eight? Yeah, it might have been fifty three oh eight. Right. Is it not fifty three oh eight? That's what it said right there, right? No, this is fifty three oh five, isn't it? One oh eight. Can you turn on the address? Fifty three oh eight Valley View Avenue oh. had a confidence factor. Don't tell me I'm wrong. At this stage, the officers realize that the reason for the delay is possibly because of them mixing up the house numbers. But these rookie mistakes will have consequences these officers never expected. <laughs> oh, hey, heads up! Hey, hey! hey. Shots fired! Shots fired! Yeah, you good? You good? Yeah, I'm back good. Up, back up, back up. Check yourself, check yourself. I'm good. Good? What starts off as confusing the house number turns into a horrific scene. Talk about zero to 100. Officer Wasson reacts to Robert Dotson opening the door, armed and aiming, to which he responds with a barrage of bullets. We're 10-4. We're going to back up a little bit. Back up, back up, back up. Okay. One. Hands up! Oh Man! Four one away. Shots fired again. Copy. Shots fired again. While cops were readjusting, Robert's wife discovers her dead husband. In her confusion and shock, she picks up her husband's gun and starts firing at the cops. You'll hear the female crying inside. The male I saw go down. Ma'am, this is the Farmington Police Department. Come out with your hands up, open, and empty. Come to the door. We're knocking on the door. No one's coming out. I hear a metallic, like, the gun, like a gun cocking. Me do Back up, the dude comes to the door, points the firearm at us, and then we get in a gunfight. And then female comes out of the house, and she points it at us as well. And is she still inside? Yes, from my knowledge. Hey, this is the police department. We're here to help you, but we need you to come whoa, whoa, whoa. out with your hands. What do you need? You can come up to my unit at Valley View and see Vista. Vista. Okay. We can help you, man, but we need you to come outside. Yes, it's really important so we can get him help. After messing up immensely, these idiots try to de-escalate the situation. While they, of course, cannot compensate for the mistake they made to get Dotson's wife unarmed and not a threat. If it wasn't for police mismanagement, this wouldn't have happened. Mm. 
three kids upstairs. Yeah. Three kids upstairs. Three kids upstairs. He's ten ten. Be careful. Kids! Please, please, you're all right. Go with them. Please. He's 10-7. Yeah, this is done. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Easy. No one else needs to come in here. You good? Yeah. Upon establishing control of the situation, the cops move in to secure the rest of the family, including three children. This tragic case to this date is widely regarded to have been preventable. What needs to be understood is that in New Mexico, it is very common for homeowners to answer their door armed something which the police should have prevented in the first place. But alas, the police officers have been acquitted of their actions, with not much more than a slap on the wrist. The last case showed us what can happen when lethal force is added into any calm situation. Just like that, this next case shows us what unnecessary show of power looks like. Stop it! Stop it! You're gonna get shot! Shoot me! On June 23rd, 2023, in San Antonio, three police officers pushed the limits of their power to the edge, making such a ridiculous error that this time there was no chance of escaping from this one. This whole issue began when a woman called from an apartment building that a lady was cutting some wires to a fire alarm system. This woman was later identified as 46-year-old Melissa Ann Perez. Hey, lady, get over here. Get over here. You're gonna get shot. Shoot me. You and I don't work. The door. After initially speaking with officers outside, Perez went back inside her apartment and locked the door. But the police followed her to the apartment. One officer tried to open the window and Perez threw a glass candle holder at him. Perez, who wasn't doing so well mentally either, just wanted to be left alone. Hey, hold on, hold on. You ain't got no warrant. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Move, move. Hey, so if we have all this evidence. Uh -uh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You ain't got no warrant. Officers continued to talk to Perez through a rear patio window, urging her to come out. When they try to enter her flat, she urges them that they can't do so without a warrant. But this is of little concern to these corrupt pigs. Apparently, the three fully grown men, who are jokes of officers, saw that Perez armed with a hammer was coming nearer to the window. This was the point that the officers attempted life-saving measures, which is a complete and utter joke. The arrest details said Perez did not pose an imminent threat of serious bodily injury or death. As a result of this, the family of Perez, heartbroken and in pain, filed a lawsuit immediately. At the same time, the police department suspended all three officers without pay. The investigation continues as all three officers are charged with murder. If the last case had you worried about how easily the police managed to violate your rights, this next case shows how truly little police actually care for human life too. This particular case takes place in December 2022, when the police and SWAT surround the home of a past offender. The police are notified when the neighbor calls and accuses Jason Klopfer of shooting in the air and making noise. What's important to note here is that the SWAT were sent since he had passed noise complaints as well. The police found his garage door open and empty with music playing, so they decided to get a warrant. What happened next had me at the edge of my seat. What's going on? Whoa! Hello? Hello? What is going on? Jason, step outside and talk to him. What the fuck is that fucking thing? I don't know. 
The residents inside the house are woken up by a police drone and the police on the megaphone. Imagine getting woken up to find your house surrounded by police. Jason, whose only fault was not raising his hands in the air sooner, gets directly shot without any warning of any kind. This leaves him on the floor helpless. I don't have a gun! I don't have a gun! I didn't 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 have one! I had to run! Turkey police, am I here now? Turkey police, am I here now? Please, you have me a mess. Well, yes, they're on their way. Oh, you shot me right here. Where are you here at? Okay, let's take my chest. Okay, let's on its way. I have no gun. Hey, hey, Matthew, hold on. Hey, start working on him. As the police arrest and apprehend his girlfriend, Jason, lying helpless on the ground, pleads for mercy from the police as they go about checking the house. In the end, dragging him out as if he was already deceased just shows how unprofessional the police are. What's most alarming about this whole scenario is that Jason was unarmed and not an apparent threat to anyone. Yet, these out-of-city SWAT officers took no mercy and shot him with bullets. As of May 1st, the city cleared all charges against Jason from this day. However, the SWAT officers who had done Jason wrong never even got so much as a complaint to get through against them. No action and no justice was brought upon them that day, unfortunately. If you weren't convinced by that last case what kind of heathens these cops can be, this next case will also show you that they are straight up bad at their job. One morning in October 2021, 27-year-old Sylvester Hayes, a father of four children, was on his way home when suddenly he was pulled over by two Dallas cops for failing to signal at a stop sign. Hayes hands over his ID and the cops look it over. Unfortunately, due to having a similar name to an entirely different suspect the cops were looking for, Hayes found himself in trouble he wasn't looking for. This all would have been avoided if the cops had just simply ran his ID through the system first. Right now you are being detained. You're gonna get tased. Come on and step out. 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 Step out. Hold on, hold on. Come on and step out. As the cops forcefully pulled him out of the car, they noticed Hayes was carrying a gun. 
While it was later confirmed to be legally registered to him, at that moment, it only added fuel to the fire. The situation escalated as officers tried to arrest Hayes. By law, the cops should have asked for his firearm license rather than diving headfirst into assumptions. Hayes was slammed to the ground while the cops pinned him down. This kind of brutality wasn't just wrong, it's against the law. While other drivers behind him watched the scene unfold, Hayes' pleas fell on deaf ears as the police continued to drag him towards their vehicle. Delta 772. If the other 70s aren't worked out with us, uh, 73, put them out with us. Put uh, 84 out with us as well. And uh, start us with um, record, please. The cops kept at it, dead set on detaining Hayes, but now they were resorting to other means of flexing their authority. While the other cops were busy restraining a suspect, another officer who had the sense to double check the details went on and had an actual conversation. Sign? I mean, I was wrong for that. Yes. So, but, so that was the reason for contact for the stop. Okay. Yes, I understand that. And I was gonna, I was gonna tell him like, what am I being detained for? I don't have any warrants. My name is. I mean, I mean, I have warrants maybe for speeding or something like that. But what, not, what is for, your name? 
Not for family violence or anything. What What is your name? Sylvester Hayes. Sylvester Hayes. A, a name of a champion. And they and they they they, they doing it because they. Bro, my, I don't know if it's because my skin is. And that, that, it has nothing to do with the skin. But, but my, look how they held me, sir. I didn't do it. It's a gun, right? But I, I wasn't pulling. I told him I had a weapon. I told him this. Okay. I told him this. This is my name. Okay. If they run it, it's going to say Sylvester Hayes. Okay. Mr. Hayes. So, and I, I don't know all the story, but there is a another Sylvester Hayes, right? So, g give me a second, right? And, and that Sylvester Hayes does have a warrant. Then maybe that's... I'm the third, man. Okay, so your last name is Hayes? Hayes. Hey, Sylvester Hayes the S third. S S I L B E S T E R. Okay. And then your date of birth? Your February birthday. 23rd, 1996. Okay. And I'm it was at this point that these cops came to realize just what they have done. Of course, after hurting and cuffing, not just the man's hands, but also his feet they realize that they've confirmed their spot in a lawsuit. We, we, we can handle all this, but when guns or stuff and stuff like that are in play... I didn't pull anything, sir. No, 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 I, and I, I never said you did, right? With everything, come on, man, with everything that's going on now, why, the, why would I pull the gun, man? I ain't trying to be another, another Man, come on, man, I don't have to say it. I don't have to say it, man. I got four babies at the house, man. What if they would have, what if happened and they would have Come on, man. I understand. For nothing, though. No. So For here. Nothing. So My car's up the day. I'm paying on it. Like, I got a good job. I work security. I work security. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be one of y'all, but like, come on, man. This is how y'all do. This is how y'all do me. I'm working I, I, to be y'all, bro. I, I, I didn't do anything. My like, name is Sting. I, 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 I do apologize. Like, if, if you feel like they, they roughed you up or whatever, I do apologize. But anytime that there's a gun involved and, like, traffic stop and be like, hey, so. We all ran the team and then we did the When I ran it and you saw me run it, it came back clear. It's not stolen. None of that, right? Nothing. Right. So damn, can I, like, and they don't even know my aunties, though. They, they in big trouble, man. What? They in big trouble. They don't even know, like, I look like this, but I got a family that's behind me, man. I understand. I got family that's behind me. I'm a smart ass. I'm, I'm a fucking smart ass. I'm an intelligent black man, man. I understand. Come on, I just look like this, man. Looks have nothing to do with But I'm just saying, how they roughing me up, how they handle me like this, like I'm some, I didn't come at them disrespectful. I didn't like, hey, you bitch, you fool. Yeah, because we pulled up and everybody was fighting and we just wanted to just, just end it exactly. right Exactly, it was because of them. I didn't say anything, man. I, didn't, I was complaining. If they had their radio on, I was And that's when these officers were about to receive an earful from their superior. At the same time, one of the sergeants showed up and gave them a piece of his mind. Okay. I'm like, hey, run that Hyundai. So she runs it. And she was like, oh, let's look at the registered owner or whatever. So she does. She goes to AIS, yeah. and that's a cross-reference, and it pops up red. So she's like, uh, okay. She kind of looks at it, but by that time we had already lost them. Yeah. We had already gone into, like, the Family Dollar parking lot or whatever. Mm -hmm. The Family Dollar parking lot. Look, you, you know, you got pulled over for this, this, and this. And he was like, well, that's not fair because you were watching me from the other side. I was like, yeah, we were on the other side of the light. So yeah. you got a good warrant. Well... Investigate, like, because he was already acting weird. So I'm like, hey, bro, like, he was already giving him trouble. Like, why? I'm like, can, can you just step out of the car, please? Stop like, Let's go to the back of the car. And at that point, he was like, for what? For what? And I'm like, bro, come on, man. And so that's whenever Reggie pulled up, and we tried to get him out of the car, and the fight was on. Okay. It's clear from their demeanor that they know they're in deep trouble. One can't even speak, and the other is sweating like a fountain, probably regretting the brutality they just dished out. Okay. Because he, he, he had a pistol in his. In his freaking uh, pocket. So, and, uh, uh, he has not been convicted. Or no felon? No felon. We have like, so we have UCW okay. resisting. Resisting? Okay. Resisting because... Well, that, I don't know if we we're going to be able to put the resistance because you okay. can't resist the tension. You can get him out of the car, but I mean, okay. if the fight is on. Yeah, you know they're in the wrong when they're desperately grasping for some legitimate crime to pin on him. You know, it's kind of standard to establish that first before illegally arresting somebody. Despite all, the cops were still unwilling to admit their mistake. Because you got y'all looked at his name in his picture earlier. They could identify him. Oh, uh, we couldn't see it in the car. So but that's we the have, thing. We have a traffic violation. You got traffic violation. Yeah. Because it raises so, for contact. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. I wasn't gonna be like, oh, it's an investigative yeah, yeah, stop, yeah, yeah. and then it turns into sh like no. So we were okay. gonna get. So when the pistol come back clean, stolen. Uh, it was clean. 
clean, okay. So he resisted. You know yes, what I'm saying? So resisted. we got him on that, right? Yeah. So that they were good. So yeah. So just uh, find out. After being charged with resisting arrest and unlawful possession of a weapon, Hayes, a father of four, spent time in prison before his charges were dismissed over a year later. Despite being an innocent man, this ordeal affected his ability to find work and support his family. But thankfully, this doesn't end on a completely tragic note. On October 23rd, 2023, Hayes finally filed a lawsuit against the city of Dallas, their PD, and the 10 officers involved. He accused them of physically assaulting, tasing, and mentally traumatizing him. This brutality not only cost him his job and home, but also traumatized his children. The body cam footage is clear evidence of that. Hayes called the officer's reasoning for pulling him over suspicious and obviously manufactured. Sylvester's case is looking very strong to win in court, and hopefully this will help establish precedent for other black individuals who have been racially profiled by the Dallas PD. If you thought the last case was a rare case of police making such silly mistakes, this next one shows us that the police do this more often than one thinks. God! Federal Detective Jacob Grant was working an undercover drug bust in January 2015 when he crossed paths with Albuquerque PD Lieutenant Greg Brackle. The lieutenant would mistake Grant as a suspect. Here's how it went down. Parking. Bus signal, bus signal, bus signal. Would you see any rational person doing this? Oh, hands up! Passenger, get your hands up! Put your hands Put up! Put your hands where I can see them! Put your hands where I can see them! Good! 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 Get out! Holy! Back out! Holy! And then it dawned on him, the reality of what he had done, a result of sheer impatience. Holy! Back out! Holy, back out! Oh shit, that was Jacob! Oh, Fuck me! Come to me! Come to me! Fuck! Are you okay? No. Come on! Come on out, dude! Come on! I'm sorry, man! I didn't know it was you! Come here! Come here, Jacob! Jacob! Jacob is shot! Get him Fuck! Fuck! Part of 365! Lieutenant Greg Brackle shot Detective Jacob Grant nine times at point-blank range, nearly killing the detective. A little questioning could have helped solve the situation much faster and in a far less lethal way. All he can do is regret his decisions as he administers first aid. He's got hit in the block! I'm sorry, man! Oh my god. You're gonna be okay, dude! You're gonna be okay! You're gonna be alright, dude. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be alright, Jacob. You're, right. You're gonna be okay. Brockle and the others tended to Grant's wounds as the ambulance hurried to the scene. Be in there, dude. You're, not, you're gonna be okay. We got you here, man. Here's another. Here's another. Do you have any more? I don't know. I don't know where his arm. Let's get this. Let's get, come on. Let's cut the shirt off. Can I move you, Jacob? No. You want to Okay. Let me see if I'm over here. Okay, go. There's one in the car. I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Turn the Turn the kit. Apparently, the lieutenant missed a crucial briefing that morning on how Detective Grant would be operating undercover that day, what clothes he would be wearing, and where he would be seated. A pretty costly mistake that led to Grant being shot in almost all of his vital organs. Eventually, Grant filed a lawsuit against the city of Albuquerque, its police department, and Brockle. But like I said, giving the situation, I'm not going to complain. In March of 2016, the city reached a settlement with Grant of $6.5 million for the hell he was put through. If you thought the last cases were gruesome, wait till you see this next one where I guy called for help and ended up paying the price for it. Watch out for a dog.
the police department. After knocking on the door and announcing themselves multiple times, the officers called the original callers and asked them to come to the front door. At this point, the officers started to suspect that they might be at the wrong address. Can you try to call them back? Tell them to come to the door. Hey, firm, if you can call the RP back and have him come to the door. Farmington, please. It might have been 4308. Is it 43 or 5308? Yeah, it might have been 5308. Right. Is it not 5308? That's what it said right there, right? No, this is 5305, isn't it? 108, can you 10 the address? 5308 Valley View Avenue oh. had a confidence factor. Six. Don't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> oh shit. Hey, hands up! As soon as Dotson came out, the officers panic, and what happens next will leave you shocked. <laughs> We're 10 4, we're gonna back up a little bit. Back up, back up, back up. Yeah. Hands up! Oh Man! <laughs> 4108, shots fired again. Copy, shots fired again. As the officers back away from the front door, they shoot at Dotson. Keep in mind that just moments before the shooting, the officers were laughing about being at the wrong address. Nonetheless, when they realize there is a man down and hear Dotson's wife screaming, they proceed to shoot some more. They'll hear the female crying inside. The male I saw go down. Ma'am, this is the Farmington Police Department! Come out with your hands up, open, and empty! Come to the door. We're knocking on the door. No one's coming out. I hear a metallic, like, the gun, like a gun cocking. Me do Back up, the dude comes to the door, points the firearm at us, and then we get in a gunfight. And then female comes out of the house, and she points it at us as well. And is she still inside? Yes, from my knowledge. Hey, Nick, this is the police department. We're here to help you, but we need you to come out with your hands. You know what do you need? You can come up to my unit at Valley View in Pedro Vista. Okay. We can help you, man, but we need you to come outside. Yes, it's really important so we can get him help. Nothing in the world can justify such erratic behavior from these officers, who have been trained to stay calm in such situations. They spend hours training and still panic like little kids at the slightest threat and watch how they justify their actions. The officers then enter the home and realize the blunder they have made. Three kids upstairs. Yeah. Three kids upstairs. Three kids upstairs. Three kids upstairs. He's 10 seconds. Be careful. Kids! Please! Please, you're all right. Go let them. He's 10 seconds. This is done. Okay, we're good. Can you see? No one else needs to come in here. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, yeah, just keep, keep them upstairs. Hold just on, stay up there. Where do you need me? Where do you want me to go? We don't. We don't need anyone else After the incident, the department's chief released a video statement calling the incident a traumatic event. But just in general, for us, this is a, a very dark day uh, for Farmington PD, for our community, for the Dotson family. I extend nothing but my deepest condolences uh, to the Dotson family. Mr. Dotson was not the subject of the call that our officers were responding to. And this ending 
is just unbelievably tragic. I'm extremely sorry. That Mark Kernut, an attorney for Dotson's family, said police fired more than 20 rounds at his client, despite never being fired at, nor even having a firearm pointed at any of the officers. Dotson committed no crime, was not a suspect, and answered the door after police went to the wrong house, Kernut said. Nothing can return Robert to his family, and it appears nothing will be done to hold these officers accountable. The family filed a lawsuit last fall in federal court, alleging that Dotson and his family were deprived of their civil rights. Watching a guy get killed for doing absolutely nothing is one of the most tragic things you'll ever see. But the cop in the next case takes it to another level when he shoots and kills a person after he calls 911 for help. Knife in his hand. Knife in his hand. Watch crossfire, watch crossfire. On June 10th, 22-year-old Christian Glass called 911 to ask for help after he crashed his car and claimed that he was stuck. Soon after, the police officers arrive at the scene, and what they do next can only be described as brutal. Hello, 911. I'm in a vehicle. My vehicle got stuck. No, really. Do you know the skin will cruise, man? They might just go by. I might be lucky. Okay, oh. can I get your date of birth real quick? I'm so lucky. Oh, I'm so lucky. <sighs> I had a spiritual awakening a few months ago and came out of my 10 years of depression, and um, I've just been... Come, come, please help. That's not good sign. What's that beep? I love you. Thank you. Yeah. I love you, seriously. You're my, you're my light right now. I love you. Are there any weapons that you're aware of? They... I have I have a weapon on me. I will throw them out the window as soon as an officer gets here. I have I have two knives and a hammer um, and, and a rubber mallet, I guess. That's a weapon. I'm not dangerous. I, can, I will keep my hands completely visible. Both cars be advised this party is stating that he has weapons in the vehicle with him, two knives, a hammer, and a rubber mallet. He did state that he would throw them out of the window as soon as officers got on scene. The call that Glass had with the 911 operator was rather strange. He mentions his spiritual awakening and other weird things, all of which points toward the fact that he is not mentally stable and definitely has some mental health issues. But at the same time, he is stable enough to mention that he is completely safe and will cooperate with the officers once they arrive at the scene. But as the officers arrive at the scene, things take an unfortunate turn. Come on, talk to us. Come on, dude, we're here to help. We're here to help. Come on, bud. You need to step out of the car now. Step out of the car now. That's a lawful order. Step out of the car, you'll be removed from the vehicle. Step out now. Weapons in the vehicle. Because you already said you have weapons in the car. No, do not throw them out. Do not touch them. Do not reach for them. He's got a knife in his seat right there. Okay. Step out of the car now. 161 at gunpoint. Step out of the car now. Step out of the car now. I will break the window. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Put your hands on the steering wheel then and don't move. You reach for anything, we're gonna have problems. A mental hospital for what? We haven't even been able to have a conversation with you. The officers tried to get Glass out of the vehicle for more than an hour, but he clearly stated that he did not feel safe enough to get out. The officers continued to ask Glass to leave the vehicle, and he again insisted that he did not feel safe. But the corrupt cops were too drunk on their power to understand the situation. Why are you scared of the knife? You're talking to the chat. That's why I want you out of the car so we can have this conversation safely. Period. That's it. This, this is the only way I can be safe. I can't understand that. What are you talking about? Hey, Christian. Will you talk to me? What can you tell me about what's going on? We're trying to help you out. You know, I see you're doing the heart thing with your hands. Look, we, we love you too. Christian, you don't have any guns or anything that scares us, right? Okay. You, you said on the phone, you know when you called us? You said on the phone that you had knives. Mm -hmm. Okay, are they big knives, little knives? At this point, the officers decide to make things worse after knowing very well that Glass would not feel safe outside the vehicle and that he had mental health issues. We're popping. Knife in his hand. Knife in his hand. Watch crossfire. Watch crossfire. Watch out. Watch crossfire. Watch crossfire. Christian. 
Drop the knife! Please drop the knife! Moments after this, an officer shot Glass five times, killing him in the process. After the shooting, the Clear Creek County Sheriff's Office released a video statement saying that Glass was argumentative and uncooperative during the incident, and that he even tried stabbing an officer as they broke into the car. He had done nothing wrong. He was just too scared to get out of his car. We have made no public statement before now. Christian's killing is a stain on Clear Creek County and on Colorado. It was a murder by a Colorado official. It was dark and he was really worried. He trusted the police to come and help him. Instead, they attacked and killed him. The killer shot Christian five times just to make sure. On Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023, the family settled with Clear Creek County, the state of Colorado, Georgetown, Colorado, and Idaho Springs for a total of $19 million, the largest settlement for a police killing in Colorado history. Then, on November 17th, 2023, the six officers who were on the scene were charged with misdemeanor failing to intervene. As tragic as this case was, it is nowhere close to what happened in the next case. Think of 16 officers shooting at a single suspect. On March 29th, 2022, Officer Rogowski and her partner from the Buffalo Police Department approached a suspect in a parking lot about his window tints and found out that his registration was suspended. But things did not go as the officer expected, as the suspect made a run for it, leading to a deadly high-speed chase. Hello? Good. Pulling over because of the tints on the car. You got your license on you? One second, okay? Mr. Bell, your your registration has been suspended since uh, uh, February for an insurance lapse. Did you have some sort of lapse or did you switch insurance or anything? Okay, yeah, your reg is suspended right now. It's not, it's not really a big deal. Uh, we're just gonna get you, well, yeah, I gotta have you step out and then we'll work with you and go from there, okay? You guys just come down here and chill? Yeah. Okay, all right, no big deal. You're on what? I'm on crutches. Like I'm oh, shit. <laughs> Was it your leg? Yeah, I got shot. Uh -huh. You got shot two weeks ago? Oh, in 2012? Yeah. Oh, so you were able... Take your time. Yeah, it's not... I knew that was coming. Knew that was coming. Knew it. Knew that was coming. Watch out here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. After an intense chase, Officer Nagi performed a pit maneuver to take down the suspect's car. But instead of dealing with the situation smartly, all the cops went full psycho on the suspect, shooting bullets from every angle. Air 
What's that? I want it. We're done. Just stop it. Just five more rounds. Still shooting. Despite the officer's warning, other officers kept shooting, causing the suspect to counterattack in return. While it is understandable that the officers had reason to shoot back at the suspect if they could have had self-control, the situation could have ended differently. But unfortunately, things went the worst possible way they could have. Here's another angle of the shootout. Heads up, out there. heads up on Fillmore, heads up on Fillmore. He's approaching now. And that's all for today. I think punishments for taking a life should be more severe if an officer does it. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. If you liked the video, consider subscribing so you don't miss my next one. Thanks for watching. This is Detective Mystery signing off.